right, this is Mr. Bruss, and I'm going to do a, a quick review of graphing linear equations. I don't know about you, but when I think about graphing lines, I think about lasers. Um, I think about lasers, I think about Star Wars, and of course when I think about Star Wars, yeah, I think about Darth Vader. Maybe look at them as lines. I look at them kind of as lasers, maybe that's weird, I don't know. But check it out. How we graph these lines? The Boom, there it is right there. Y equals MX plus B. So this whole section is a quick review of how do you graph a line uh, and what is slope intercept form. Let's do it. Here we go. So slope intercept form is Y equals MX plus B. So where in the world did they come up with that crazy uh, name slope intercept form? Well, let's let's break this down. What is this M right here? This is the Oh my gosh, handwriting's terrible. Let's try that again. This is the slope of the line right here. That is the slope of the line. And then what is the B term out here? This is the Y intercept. So write this down. This is huge. We gotta have this. This is the Y intercept. And my handwriting's a little spotty today. Sorry about that. Uh, so we got that. So M is the slope. Sometimes it's called the rate of change, and I knew I was going to have struggle with handwriting, so I wrote that one out. Sometimes the y-intercept is called the initial value. So jot that all down. This is the whole section right here is mx plus b. We're going to use it forever. <laughs> so we might as well get used to it. You're going to use it all this year, next year. It just, uh, it's just going to keep coming up and coming up. So m is the slope. Uh, what are x and y then? Well, these are just points. Remember when you plot points, it's x comma y. These are always changing, so we leave them uh, generically as x and y, like they're always changing. So um, those are the points on the line, so we leave them like that. So what are these lines usually look like? Well, they usually... Okay, so let's just get in there and graph some of these bad boys here. So when I'm going to graph one of these, remember this is that y equals mx plus b. They're all going to be in this form, and later on we'll mix it up do some different forms, but they're all mx plus b. So what do we got going on here? Well, b in this case is what? It's the negative four. So this is pretty great. You just put a dot there, go to negative four. This is the y-axis, remember? This is the x-axis. So on the y-axis, every single time you put this number, negative four, count down one, two, three, four, there it is. Put a big fat dot, that's one of your dots. Now what are we gonna do? We're gonna do the slope. We're gonna do the m, which in this case is one over three. So in this case, it's one over three. So there's a couple ways to think about slope. Slope is the rate of change is how I like to say it. Uh, it's also when you're just graphing, it's your rise over your run. So it's how much do you rise up and how much do you run over. It's like how much do you rise in the y direction, how much do you run in the x direction. So what's our rise over run here? We're gonna rise one and run three. So I'm gonna rise up one, over one, two, three, put another dot, boom, there it is. I like to fill, and I want you to fill these papers up with as many dots as you can. So go up one over three again, put another dot, up one over three if you can, another dot. And you go the opposite direction. You could have went backwards. Instead of going up and right, you could go down and left. So we're making these nice straight lines here. Boom, just like that. And then you're going to draw a straight line in there. Woo, that's not too shabby for me. Uh, if you struggle, get a ruler or a straight edge help you out there uh, with that line. Awesome. Let's try the next one. So I didn't give you this one in your notes. You have to actually write this down. Write this down. Don't leave this blank. This is the key. I want to see that equation. And let's do this one together. So if you need to pause me, pause me. That's cool. But I want to graph y equals 3 fifths x plus 1. So what is, where do you start? You start with a b. You start at 1. So put a dot here. And really to make a line, you only have to have two dots. So where's the next dot? We're going to rise 3, run 5. So always rise up. 1, 2, 3, run 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there it is. So that's great. You can draw a line. You're good to go. But if you can do that, I'd like you to go both directions. It'll just help out later on. So if you went up three, right five, do the opposite. Go down one, two, three, back one, two, three, four, five. Put a dot in there. Draw your line. Ooh, that's good. Just like that. Awesome. There we go. We're killing it. Killing it. Let's graph some more. So I'm going to throw a little variation at you. But that's the, the general idea is always the same here. So if I look at this, I say, okay, y equals mx plus b. I'll write that on here every single slide. It's so important. And where do I start? Where? What is my b term in this case? Well, it's this negative 3. So go down 1, 2, 3, put a dot. There's your first dot. And wait a minute, not a fraction. Bummer. Well, really, everything is a fraction here. Everything is a fraction. What is it? It's Everything is divisible by 1. 2 over 1 is just 2. So write it as a fraction. What am I going to do? I'm going to rise 2, up 1, 2, and run 1. Up 2, over 1. Boom. Up 2, over 1. Up 2, over 1. Up 2, over 1. And then do the opposite. Go down 2, back 1. Down 2, left 1. And now we've got all our dots on that. 
And there was my, whoa, gosh, that one got a little rough. Sorry about that. Straight line through there. So I'm looking for these dots. I'm grading the dots is what I'm going to see. Make sure they're in the right spot. Got to be in the right place. All right. Let's move it up to negative. So what did I do here? If you notice how this one's different, I added a negative sign. So what is that going to do? Well, negative slope is going to go downhill. These have all like been going uphill from left to right. So let's graph it. Same thing. I still start at negative 1. Start that B term. So here's my starting point, my initial value. And what am I going to do from there? So negative 1 half, you can think of it as negative 1 over 2. You can think of negatives in front. Some people even think of it like this. They're all the same thing. I like to think of it as this one right here on top. So I'm always going to rise that negative. I'm going to rise down one. So it's the same thing as out front, but it's really, I'm just going to put it with the top term or you can put the bottom, but it's easier to rise down one. So rise down one, I'm going to go down one, and I still go right every time over two. Down one, over two. Down one, over two. Down one, over two. And then if I want to keep that going the other way, I went down one over two, I'm going to go up and back, up and back, just doing the opposite here. Up and back and up and back. I got my dots, and this is always the exciting part. Can he draw a line through it? Woo, okay, not too bad. Not too bad on that one. So negative lines always go downhill from left to right. Positive lines always go uphill. So I always double check. Positive slope, uphill, negative slope, downhill. Very nice, we got two more of these. So I'm not gonna give you these two. Write down the equation. That's your job. Write them down, pause it, try graphing it, see how it goes, and then we'll put the answers up and see how you did. All right, did you get these lines here? So check out this one over here. Did you catch the negative? You're rising down four. One, two, three, four, over. One, two, three. That's that negative slope, and I started at two. Hopefully you caught the negative there. And again, double check it. Slope's negative. Got to go downhill. This one I tried to trick you. You know, we're so used to this MX plus B, but I changed the order, didn't I? The M is the one with the X, so it has to have the variable X. So in this case, this is B. You can say minus mx or plus mx, however you want to do it. But that is the m right there. So notice I started at 3. This is the b. So the b term is 3. And the m term is this negative 4 thing here. So it's still mx plus b. It's just out of order. So write it in order. And again, not only do that, I threw something at you like 4 over 1 is the fraction. So you're going down 4 over 1. That was tricky. Um, but I just want you to make, be aware of that one. So if you didn't get it, change it right now. Make sure you got that. Uh, you'll see that again in the practice. We'll practice some of those. Excellent. That is graphing right there. And you know probably by now, Matt, there's always some exceptions to the rules or some special cases. So we've got a couple here. We've got two special slopes. So one slope is a zero slope. So we got a zero slope. Uh, awesome. So there's our zero slope. And what does that look like? Well, imagine no slope, no positive or negative. What's going on? It's just a flat line. So let's just do an example. How about this? This would be in a case y equals 4. Weird, huh? There's no slope in it. Why? There's no x in it, so I can't have a slope. Is there a y-intercept? Sure, that's b. There's still y's at 1, 2, 3, 4. So go to your y-intercept, put a dot there, and imagine no slope. What if you don't change positive or negatively? What do you do? You're a constant. You're a 0. You're Mr. Kelly, a 0. Oh, uh, boom, just like this. And that's kind of flat. It's a flat line. It's a horizon. Some people like to think of it as a horizontal line. I mean, it is a horizontal line. Horizon or horizon if you put a Y in there. So you can remember it's that. So that is a zero slope. Technically speaking, it'd really be something like this. Y equals 0x plus 4. But uh, we don't write that. That's why zero times anything is zero. We write it like this. So if you ever see a Y equals, it's a horizontal line. Awesome. So what is uh, probably the vertical line we're looking for? If that's a zero slope, the other one is actually we call undefined slope. So if you have an undefined slope, it doesn't exist. It's an undefined slope. Jot this bad boy down, and you may have guessed it. It's something like this. What about x equals uh, 3, let's say? That's what it's going to look like. So instead, this is weird. I don't have a y-intercept because you know there's no b in this because y equals 4 over here this is x equals 3 so you have to go this is the only time uh, you'll have an x intercept 1 2 3 x is always 3 no matter what x is always going to be 3 it's not a flat line here it doesn't have zero slope it's undefined slope it's actually a vertical slope it's straight up and down i think why is that undefined i can see it right there mr brust well it's undefined because imagine rise over run let's say i'm rising up 1 and i'm running over 0 can you divide by zero? No way. Cannot divide by zero. So that's impossible. So I can't rise up any number and then go over zero. So I've got something like this. Boom. 
There it is right there. So if you see x equals 3, it's going to be a vertical slope in, or a vertical line, and it's going to have an undefined slope. Awesome. Special cases. So if you can remember those two, you're golden. All right, now that we figured out how to graph some lines, let's write the equation of some lines. So what if I already have it graphed for you? Uh, can you tell me the equation? Well, sure. I know it's going to be, in this case, y equals mx plus b. This is our go-to. Y equals mx plus b. And let's plug them in. So we got to find the slope and the y-intercept. So I think it's easier to start with a b because I can look at it right here. Here's where it be. <laughs> Uh, it's 5. My b is 5. There it is. That's where it crosses. That's the y-intercept. And what's the slope of this line? Well, i got to count the slope here. So you got to find the next place it hits perfectly. Well, it hits perfectly between the corners of the grids right here. Looks like it hits here. So you may have to throw some dots in here and then just count it. How much am I rising and how much am I running? In this case, I'm rising down 1, 2, 3. So I can say it's negative 3. And how much am I running? over 1, so it looks just like this, y equals negative 3 over 1x, or do we need that 1 on bottom? No, nah, most people aren't going to write that. It's negative 3x plus 5. I'll count either one. They're both right, uh, but we won't put divide by 1 on there. Awesome. Very nice. So again, the next one, if you struggle with this at all, write out y equals mx plus b, and then find your two pieces. You just got to find the b and the m, so uh, let's do it. We're going to say, where's the start? Where's the y-intercept? It's at negative 1. So boom, negative 1. And this looks like it hits not all the way until up here, maybe back over here. So going left to right, I'm rising up 1, 2, 3, over 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm looking at 3 fourths x uh, minus 1. That's your equation. There it is. And again, I'm going to give you more of these to practice. They're pretty fun. And I, tr I went ahead and threw a special case in there just to see if you could remember. Basically, it's going to be, you're going to break it down to, is this y equals 3 or x equals 3? Well, it's a vertical slope, and I always remember, who does it touch? It touches the x-axis, so this is x equals 3. Let make sure you really realize that's an x. That's a big x right there. Equals 3. That's the equation of that line. It's a vertical line special case. So make sure you're cool with those. We've got lots of practice for you. All right, let's put it all together here. So you may be asking, like, like why are we doing this? Uh, if not now, at some point in the year, I'm sure you will be. But we're going to use lines all the time. And I just – you got to be able to recognize that, hey, we're going to take these verbal expressions. We can make them equations. We can fill out tables. And a graph It's all the same thing. So it's all just different ways to represent the same thing. So let's do this. Mr. Sullivan was kind of showing this in the last section. Bob has three cakes. He bakes five cakes not very. That should be every. Sorry about that. Every two hours. Uh, so can we write an equation? Sure. If we're writing equations, if we know it's a line, and this is a constant rate of change, so we know it's going to be a line. So we got this y equals mx plus b. Can you go ahead and fill that out? Sure. What does he start with? He starts with three cakes. So he has three cakes. And what is he doing from there? He's baking what? What's his rate of change? Five cakes every two hours. Boom. And X and Y are our variables. They're going to change depending on what we're talking about. And we should probably define what X and Y are. So what are X and Y? What do they stand for? Well, anytime you can use time, time is usually your X. It's your independent. It kind of causes everything to happen. So this is your time. And what is it measured in? In this case, it is an hour. So we should label that. And then what is the Y in this case? It is cakes. And that's just a number, uh, the number of cakes that Bob would have like that. Boom. So if we can take a verbal, write the equation, now you have options. I can fill in this table or I can go straight to the graph. Either way is cool. Let's go ahead and fill in the table. What happens if you put zero into this equation? Well, zero times anything is zero. And we know this. Think about it in just a word problem. At times zero, how many cakes do you have? You have three cakes. How many in four hours? Well, maybe you could just keep the pattern going. Every two hours he bakes five, so he'll have, what, five and then two more hours is four, so that's ten cakes. He'd have thirteen cakes. Uh, negative 6, kind of weird. Does it make sense in this problem? No, it doesn't at all. Could we still find it? Sure, you could put negative 6 into the equation. You could say, hey, what happens when x is negative 6? And solve this. Negative 6, 5 halves, that's like 3, negative 3. So that would be, what, negative 15 plus 3, which is negative 12. So could you have negative 6 hours ago and he has negative 12 cakes? Probably not. The function, the equation is still going to give it to you. It's still going to give you a point. It's just not going to really make sense in your word problem. How about this? What if I want to know, hey, when do you have 23 cakes? Plug in the equation. Now it's your y variable, the amount of cakes. And I want to know how long 
Maybe he's got to make 23 cakes for a party or something. Uh, and then just solve this bad boy. So it goes back to, boom, Mr. Kelly, 0 0.1. I didn't think uh, there was any value in Mr. Kelly's section. Turns out there is. Look at that. Unbelievable. So if you solve this thing, subtract 3 from both sides, you get 20 equals 5 halves. And then how do you solve this? You can divide by 5 halves or multiply by 2 fifths. Same difference, and I'm sure Mr. Kelly covered that. So what is 2 fifths of 20? That should be 8. So in 8 hours, we'll have 23 cakes. So we can use the equation or the verbal to fill in the table. You could plot these points. Remember, these are just all points. 0, 3 is a point. Here it is. Go over 0 of 3. Boom, there's a point. 4, 13 doesn't even fit on my graph, uh, so I'm not going to plot that one. But I'll use this. Up 5 over 2, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 2. There you go. There's his cakes. You could even go negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over 2. But are you going to need that? Nah, probably not. You only want this section. So a lot of times in word problems, you know, if this is time down here, we only want positive time. If this is cakes. Unless he's going to owe people cakes, which maybe he does, we usually look in this first quadrant here. This is where we usually... Uh, are taking our graph from. We don't care too much about the negatives, unless we're talking about money or things where you can have negatives in there. Awesome. That is it right there. So uh, practice these bad boys. If you're struggling after you've done the practice, do the correct assignment. Make sure you're good to go before the master check. Good luck on that master check. Peace.